would you do if your government lied to you and told you that cannabis made minorities kill, rape, and pillage? Lend me your ear and I'll show you, my dear, how it saved my sweet little dog from cancer. Oh, I get high with a little help from my friends. Oh, my dog didn't die with a little help from my friends. Oh, I'm gonna try to erase years of propaganda for your morning scare tactics and red pill you to death with a little help from my friends. We are live. I just started a live broadcast on Facebook. We are in the Third Wheel Studios, podcast studios on Wilshire in Los Angeles, California for the Flower Power Hour. Hey, you remember. With Tino and Jesse. Hello, everyone. And my man Nolan on the, on the turntables, on the ones and twos. Uh, okay, so for those of you watching the live right now, we're just um, going to talk about the cannabis oil. <clears throat> we're going to talk about uh, the process. We're going to talk about how my shorty beat cancer with cannabis oil. I got her blood test from when, from her last birthday. But uh, for you guys watching <clears throat> on Facebook, we're just going to give you a little preview. Um, next time, we're going to uh, incorporate this into... Um, Nolan set up. By the way, if you guys want to do a podcast here in the LA area, hit up Third Wheel Podcast Studio. They're in Wilshire. They got uh, a new, um, bigger room because they're doing so well. And they record everything for you. They send you an MP3 or an MP4 or a, uh, I don't know, LGBTQX. <laughs> um, and they can now they can do a live. We were just talking about doing live. So uh, we are testing this right now because we're going to start doing live um, when we do the podcast for the Flower Hour Power Hour. Is that what I called it? Flower. <laughs> <laughs> the Flower Hour Power Hour. Uh, flower Power Hour. That's what it there is. There we go. Um, and we're going to talk uh, all things cannabis, <clears throat> helping humans and people. CBD, THC, uh, hemp, the difference between RSO and what uh, OC Consultants, the Healing Project, is doing. Uh, you can find, if you're you're seeing this from the My Dog Beat Cancer group, we'll actually link this into the OC um, Consultants page as well. Um, the On the pinned post, you can see the uh, link to the Healing Project, which is just healing... Dash project, dash project dot info dot info healing dash project dot info if you want to get a hold of Jesse this is the man right here this is the guy that saved my dog that helped me save Shorty from cancer um, real quick before we move on I, I want to get this out of the way right on, right up front on Shorty's fifteenth birthday we did her blood work this is the same vet that told me that she would be gone in eight weeks so two thousand. March 14th, 2015, my little sweet shorty was diagnosed with lymphoma, and the vet said she had eight weeks to live. This is her blood work four years later, because uh, this was on her 15th birthday. Um, lymphocytes test, 17%. Normal is 12 to 30. Her white blood blood cell count, 6.9. Normal is 5 to 15. Uh, lymphoma, you see higher. Uh, higher values, her liver value, I always say higher because my L looks like an H. Liver values looked great, um, quoting the vet. she Her blood work does not look like a dog that has cancer. So this uh, concludes the free section for the people watching on the uh, live right now, and we're going to go into the recording of this. Um, do you want to add something before I say goodbye to these people, Jesse? No, we're just going to go over a lot of uh, the what to expect once you start treatment with cannabis oil. We're going to cover that right now. Okay. So for you guys, we will be posting this finished. It's an hour, uh, probably in the next week or so. Check back here. We'll put it on YouTube. We're going to get it all on iTunes as we get going more with these podcasts. Um, until then, uh, we are signing out for now because we're going to get going on this um, recording. So peace, love, and pit bulls. Talk to you guys later and see you later. So, so jumping right into it, uh, we've recently had a lot of people asking more and more about the the process the the way that we start treatment what to expect what type of compounds to use and i just wanted to get into that a little bit okay uh you know when we start typically when i talk to a client and i go over their dog's information i ask them a couple different questions what's the dog's diagnosis their weight their age and a couple of other things regarding their what 
uh, prescription drugs they're taking? How are they eating? Because we have to get that medicine into their system. So making sure that they're eating and not taking any prescription drugs that are going to inter interact with any of the cannabis oil uh, compounds is, is pretty important. So once I figure out what it is that they have, how much they weigh, I in my head can come up with a number, uh, a dosage amount that we're going to try and reach based off of that weight and diagnosis. Now, not all diagnosis are the same when it comes to treating uh, with cannabis oil. So let's say, for example, lymphoma, that diagnosis, and this is just based off of my own experience. So uh, disclaimer here, guys, I'm not a vet, doctor, never been in the medical field, but just from experiences, what I've seen when it comes to, say, for example, a lymphoma diagnosis, that diagnosis does better with CBD mostly. And now I know people have their opinion about what they feel they should be giving their dog based on it being cancer. And it's always THC driven. Mm -hmm. That's usually what most people uh, associate a treatment with cannabis oil as far as what they're supposed to give them. I disagree 100 percent. Here's why. So when it comes to dogs, when it comes to giving them the medicine, they can't talk. They, they're not able to tell you how they feel. So you have to give them the medicine in a way where you know that it's not affecting them there in a psychological way or, or giving them euphoria or causing them to feel very, really uncomfortable. The only way to do that is to start off with a very small amount. Mm. We gradually increase it and we go into the higher dosages over time. In the beginning, let's say, for example, it's a lymphoma diagnosis. What we're going to want to do is give that dog a ton of CBD. Now, when I talk about CBD, there are two very different types of CBD out in the market right now. People are not sure which ones to get. You know, this is what my buddy got, and I don't know what, what's good, what's not good. The bottom line is there's two very different strains of CBD that are being sold out in the market right now. The big one is hemp-derived CBD. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to make. Uh, they grab a bunch of hemp stock, they throw it into a big giant blender, and it just chops up the, the material and it becomes very small. The particulates go into mm -hmm. some type of a CO2 extraction uh, vessel and they extract as much. They're basically bleeding uh, a rock you know, out of their CBD, mm. out of these, these stalks and leaves and, and seeds that they get from hemp. And then they come out with the CBD that's been isolated typically. They, they extract all the lipids, the waxes, the chlorophyll, all of the, the other stuff that I believe is needed in order to make it real medicine. And so they, they extract it. And at some point, they just give you a pure CBD, which sounds good on paper. It's, it's the best. It's the purest. But it's not, in my opinion, medicinal at that point because they've taken away all of the, mm. the other goodies. That, so it's like when you overcook your vegetables? Pretty much. Like they say, like if you're eating soggy broccoli, <laughs> it's done, it's, man. You, you got all yeah. the good nutrients out of it, right? Yeah. So, so what, what I want to let people know is that the CBDs are very different, but if all you can get is CBD from hemp, then get it. If that's all you can get, your state's available. The stuff we should be using is the stuff from cannabis. It's derived from the, the flower, which is the bud of the, the, the cannabis plant. And that's where you're going to get the most out of it. The yields become higher. The strengths become more potent and it should contain a ton of THC, usually over 3%, something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have the compound started in the beginning, say for like the lymphoma, like I was saying, we want to give that dog a lot of CBD because it de uh, compresses the lymph nodes from fluid. It reduces inflammation throughout the body. Mm. It alleviates uh, that pressure, which will then lead to less pain. It modulates it at the site locally as well. And neurologically, it does for a lot for the dog to help the dog feel better. So in the first week or two, the way that I dose, I give the dog only CBD in the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's so that the dog, for two reasons, so it builds up tolerance to the THC, and then eventually, people don't realize this, if we give enough CBD, the dog actually doesn't have a reaction when we, when we start the THC because the CBD actually takes away euphoric reactions without changing the chemical compound itself of the THC. Mm -hmm. So you have THC A, which is the raw form of the cannabis in its plant state. When they extract it, usually they decarboxylate it and it be, they lose the, molecule, the A molecule and it's just THC at that point. When you introduce THC, 
into a dog system by itself, it'll, it'll cause a couple of reactions. It'll detoxificate the, the body and it'll cause euphoria. And, and in some dogs, because of the lymphoma, when you start that process, if you start just with THC in the very beginning, the dog's going to go through what they call a Herx, Herxheimer's reaction, which means that the body gets more toxic, causes the dog to feel sicker, mm. and then goes downhill from there. So the dog starts with THC, gets euphoric, feels yucky already. Then you detoxify the body too fast, and now there's a real physical reaction to it, and the dog feels even sicker. Hmm. And that's why when dogs that have lymphoma, when the parent, you know, God bless the parent for trying to help the dog, but they're doing they're doing the wrong stuff. They're using they're the wrong backwards. Compound. And and so when they start that THC, the the dog will get sicker, and they're like, oh my God, mm. you know, I, what yeah. did I do? I yeah. got to take rush him to the hospital. Yeah, a very simple way of of avoiding all that. If you're going to start any regimen of a cannabis protocol with any type of dog, any type of person, you want to start off with just CBD because it's non-psychoactive. It mm -hmm. does have a lot of, and it has to be from cannabis. It'll have THC right, in it, right. but it won't be as euphoric because it's mainly CBD. At that point, that person will build up tolerance to the other compounds, the other THC compounds, which there's two. Uh, one that I typically recommend throughout the day, which is sativa. Mm. That one there will give you more of a of a mind opening, more creative, more energized oh, I know, feeling. I know sativa. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the question is, can you do the hemp CBD and then the THC cannabis? You well, don't you because you, you were saying you want to do the <laughs> CBD from cannabis, but you can't like someone who can't well. No, that's the big thing because in, in most states, even in the states that are just barely getting up to speed with the, the program, mm. they are allowing a lot of the patients to get THC, which is the main oh. one that causes the euphoria. But yeah. it's, it's available pretty much in any state now or a local uh -huh. uh, 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 nearby state to a state that doesn't have mm -hmm. it. So that part's not tough. The CBD, though, super, super hard to get because of how people perceive CBD from what they've heard they go to any local store and buy it now at a gas station they can go to a right. walmart and buy cbd it's all, products it's all online we see yeah. people in the forums you can uh, go online and day. buy it. oh is this okay it's like look if you if you're seeing the advertisement online and they're saying they're going to send it to the you right stuff. it's hemp it's so my right question stuff. was can you have a success story with hemp cbd and thc to beat cancer i i really want it to work brother i do um We've tried it several different times mm -hmm. with several different clients that had their own CBD. Yeah. And then we just recommended get some THC somewhere and they got it. And the reactions were very different. Yeah, the, the dog did not do as well. Right. Especially with lymphoma. Right. If it's not real CBD the and way, you give it to the dog, it's not the same. The way I look at it is I see, because we've got OC consultants, the Facebook page, and we got My Dog Beat Cancer, and I'll see sometimes people post, uh, well, I can't. I can't get this, so I'm going to try this, or I'm just going to do this. And my, what I always say is, look, I created this page. We created these pages. I created. I first started my dog be cancer just because we had so many people asking on my other page, which has a ton of followers on Peace, Love, and Pitbulls. What did you do? How did you do this? So I just created this page, just a separate page away from the dog rescue thing. This is what I did. If you want. My information, how Shorty beat it, five years, this March will be five years, she's cancer-free, this is what I did. And then people will, well, what about this? The questions I'm asking you. Well, what about uh, hemp here, and what if I do this? And, what, and I'm like, look, this is your dog's life. This is your loved one, right? So why would you gamble? Why would you experiment? We have a system that works. I understand you can't get it in some places, but what we're saying Put your best foot forward if you can. When I was doing this in Vegas, this was before it was legal, before all the dispensaries popped up. And the, the thing that I always say to people online, because they'll be like, oh, it's illegal here in my state. And I'm like, well, it was illegal here when I started this too. And if giving a plant to my dog is wrong, guess what? I don't want to be right. So sue me. Fire me. Well, I remember five years me. ago when we first met, you drove all the way to meet yeah, with me. Yeah. And yeah. we, we talked for That's several right. hours That's and we, right. you know, I gave you the medicine then, but that's right. Uh, I drove out from Vegas yeah. to meet Jesse. 
lately, you know, the way that I've been able to help people get their own medicine is because of how the networks become so big yeah. uh, and so popular with other states. I know a lot of people that are able to get medicine, so it's not as hard as it was right. before. It's getting better. And so now getting medicine is not the problem. The, the, the problem now is how do I dose my dog with right. this medicine? So. Right. Uh, we're going to, we're going to take a call in a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, with a person whose dog is, uh, in, in remission now from lymphoma. We help his dog out. And this person that I'm about to talk to, uh, he's, he's going to talk a little bit about, uh, how he got his dog there and, and the journey that they have. Now the dog came out of remission just recently again. So we're struggling with that part of it, with you lymphoma? know. With lymphoma? Yeah, and and so that's Did he stop with the medicine? No, we we continued, but I don't know if it was uh something else. I'm going to let him okay. kind of elaborate on that. Okay. But um what I was going to say is that as we get started with the treatment, usually when we uh when we get to a certain dosage amount and we we reach that golden amount that's supposed mm -hmm. to happen, that range that we're supposed to get to based on that dog's weight, that's where we see a lot of the magic. Mm -hmm. So in the in the meantime, we got to get there, right? It takes mm -hmm. time. It could take upwards of two to three weeks to get that dog into that dosage amount that that's needed in order to reverse the diagnosis. But in the me in the meantime, there's things that are happening. The dog will get, you know, diarrhea. The dog will right, start losing right, appetite. Right. The dog will start getting, you know, uh, parts of the skin that break out in hives. Or mm -hmm. I've even heard dogs go blind, lose the the rear legs altogether have seizures, you know, with the diagnosis. So what I'm trying to convey to people as as we get started with, you know, or down the road with with what we're doing is people need to be not only patient with the medicine and and get on the program and then hopefully follow the routine that I'm giving them the the protocol, but they have to do their own homework and they have to do their own, you know, their own due diligence to make sure they give the medicine when they're supposed to. Yeah, yeah. And they're giving the dog food that they're supposed to, the yeah. supplements, all of it's incorporated, yeah. you know, and, and positivity, you know, I'm, I'm an energy healer with my wife and we do this as well, but uh, the positivity part, you spoke on it before you got to be that way. You know, yeah. I have people calling me and they're crying yeah. and the dog's right there, mm. you know, so I, I try and get them to, yeah. At least change their perception about that part. I think I told this story before. There was, okay, so we got the diagnosis. It was, so that was March. So it was right before summer, and it started heating up in Vegas, and I'm laying on the couch with Shorty, and she's laying on me next to me, and I'm just feeling sad. I'm kind of, you know, not happy I, obviously my dog's been given a death sentence and she's laying there and then I just said you know what no we're not going to do this so I got up we went outside and we went swimming and she came alive <laughs> she came alive because just just we were just laying and feeling sorry for ourselves and she's laying there next to me and I was like nope we're gonna be positive we're gonna do this and you know, I can't help it. You know, it's in my name. No, Tino, I can't help but be negative. So when I when I got my dog and I was like, I'm just going to be positive and I'm going to and I tell people all the time, don't keep a regular schedule. Don't sit around. Oh, poor, my poor dog. No, because your dog's going your dog picks up on your energy. And if you're sad, your dog is sad. So you have to be strong. You have to be strong for your dad. I know it's your dog. It's easier said than done. I tell people just watch nothing but comedy everything that's going to make you laugh, just do that when you're with your dog, but keep your schedule. And that's what I did. Yeah. The, the other part to being active with your dog is like, say for example, lymphoma and leukemia, uh, the body is producing that cancer at the blood level. And, uh, the only way to get rid of it is it is to pump it out the, the system out of the mm. lymphatic system, but there's no natural pumping station mm. for the lymphatic system in your dog. So the only way they can get rid of that fluid is by being mobile, mm. walking around, yeah. running, and yeah. that movement will yeah. actually get those lymph nodes to squeeze and nice. open and gets rid of the fluid. So when I, I tell this to people as well, keep your dog active. That's why we want to give them right. sativa during the day so they can right. have energy. And then at night they can sleep. And mm -hmm. I don't believe in give them a bunch of uh, THC and keep them in bed all day. It's it's counterproductive. Right. The dog will actually get worse. Right, right. So going back to what I was keep saying, the, the other part of the dosing, I'm, we're going to get into the call right now. Uh, 
when it comes to other types of cancers, you know, I, I touched on lymphoma, uh, lymphoma and how we start with just CBD and eventually get a little THC introduced. It's the opposite for others. We start with CBD and then we eventually get THC in and we start bringing that THC real high. Uh-huh. But it's dependent on that type of cancer. Uh-huh. Carcinoma, sarcomas, those are usually very aggressive. Those yeah, are the ones we need. Sarcoma. We need a lot of THCs, the lymphomas, leukemias, melanomas, even transitional cell carcinomas, adenocarcinomas. They all respond better to uh, CBD. Mm. Um, so I'm going to take this call now. Okay. Let's see if uh, he's available here. And uh... sorry about that, guys. Do, do, I thought he was in there. Do, do. Gary, how you doing? It's Jesse. I've got you on the phone live. We're on the podcast. Uh, wanted to go over a little bit about uh, your doggy there, Nina, and uh, Tino's with me, and so is Nolan, the producer here. So, uh, hey, Tino. Hey, man. Hey, man. What's happening, buddy? So, tell me a little bit about what, how uh, you know we got started, and and the process with Nina and all that. Okay. Um. Let's see. Well, first of all, I want to give thanks to my creator, our creator, and and um, because she shouldn't even be here right now, but she is, and she's doing well, thriving. And um, Nina, her name is Nina Simone. Um, she's a Yorkie pool, just turned eight years old. Um, she was diagnosed on June the fourteenth, two thousand nineteen, with um, B cell, um, stage four leukemia, um, was intermediate to large cell. And fortunately, when I first brought her in, you know, she had no symptoms. And, um, basically I had, I had been gone. I'd left her with my wife for two weeks. I, I was, went back East and when I came back, you know, I always, you know, feel her and stuff. And I noticed two lumps underneath her, her jaw. Um, and, um, I really didn't pay too much attention about it at first. Second day, I thought it was getting a little bit larger. Then the third day, it got larger, and I started reading up on it, and I um, came across uh, lymphoma. And, um, and then, um, I was trying to dismiss the worst-case scenario in my mind, but then I took her to her vet, um, the following day. This is the third day, and it was, you know, it kept getting bigger. And she was able to evaluate them, and you know, thank God she did, and um, um, and she was able to perform a biopsy, and and here we are today. But um, my main goal was to manage her illness um, by maintaining her best quality of life through using a combination of conventional and holistic processes and methods. And, you know, once I found out about this whole thing and I became um, totally 100% focused on her well-being and, and trying to save her life. And like I said before, I was fortunate that when I went through her vet and she had the wherewithal to perform the immediate biopsy. And, and um, as I was waiting for the results, um, I was able to hook up um, an appointment with on- oncology. And they immediately began testing and began treating her. Um, since I have, I was fortunate enough to have insurance, I was able to afford the gold standard, was the CHOP Wisconsin protocol. And uh, we started her on chemo, I think it was the fourth day. Um, but prior to that, I had already begun researching about the municipal properties and benefits of cannabis. Um, and it was during that spring of 2019 when she was first diagnosed, um, you know, there was a lot of media things on the social network and on television. Um, there were running numerous reports about the positive effects of medicinal, medicinal cannabis. 
um, you know, um, Dr. Sanjay Gupta on CNN did a yep. huge expose on it, and yep. um, I'm sure I'm sure at that particular time that's when you know it, it started coming out, you know, um, you know, and and I was like right there on the forefront of it, so I started soaking this stuff up, and but it was a lot of research and 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 a lot of luck that I, that eventually led me to just. Um, and what I had learned up to that point, um, was that cannabis, I mean, well, that's uh, THC, it was necessary for THC to be included in with the CBD in order to, um, be effective <clears throat> towards any kind of cancer. And, um, and, the, um, the protocol Jesse was using really made sense to me. And, um, <clears throat> and so basically it was, Jesse was using the THC along with the CBD tinctures and also along with the FICO. And I had done a lot of research, extensive research, you know, um, even prior to getting with Jesse, I was looking at the, um, the Rick Simpson situation. I didn't know, you know, I, I, and then, you know, it didn't feel right to me when he, his extraction process, he was using some kind of petroleum product and, it didn't really sit well with me. And, um, but anyway, um, when I got with Jesse, we immediately started Nina on the cannabis oils. And it was shortly after her first chemotherapy, her first chemo treatment. And so I continue a combination of holistic and conventional means for that routine for possibly three months. When I noticed that the chemo was starting to diminish Nina's quality of life. And she was depressed all the time, throwing up, you know, not all the time, but, you know, but she was throwing up and she was having diarrhea. And, and so I decided to take her off of the chemo. And, um, and, and I just continued it in the chemo in August of 2019. Um, Back in September, in September, her lymph nodes started growing again, you know, and we, Jesse, had adjusted the, um, the amount, the dosage, and it went down, and then it came back up again, and I finally returned to her oncologist and requested some prednisone mm -hmm. as we were trying to get the dosage right with Nia. Um, um, So if the, the the nose would fluctuate, they would go up in size and they would go go back down again, and then eventually, and and just this just recently in February the twelfth, I think it was, her, her nose got so large that they were affecting. They just started affecting the way that she was breathing. Wow. They were pressing on her windpipe. Wow! So I took her back to my oncologist and I got her a shot of X Elspar. And we, we uh, reluctantly yesterday, I started her on chemo um, again. It, it was the oral chemo, the the Lewinstein, the Lewinstein, how you call it. And um, she she got an oral shot of that, and I'm just going to keep her on that for 30 days, approximately 30 days. Um, she has one treatment. She had one treatment yesterday, and she goes back another three weeks and get another treatment. And, um, and I think that's going to be the last time I do that. But by that time, I'm hoping to have a dosage down with Jesse where, um, her, um, cancer is manageable and, um, and it's just, we can just use a maintenance protocol to keep her at bay. So that's pretty much what her story is. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been rough but at the same time. Um, it's been a learning process. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have been able to have met the amazing people that I've met along this journey um, and uh, and learn the things that I've learned. And I'm, now I have a passion myself, you know, that I want to give back, you know, from um, Nina's issues that she's having. You know, I want to be able to share that, you know, not only with your platform, but with any platform that has people out there that are in need. You know, there's a river of tears out there 
you know, as you, you know, you guys both, you guys know, and um, and and Tino, um, you inspired me, man. You were one of the first. You were actually the first video on it I watched was yours, and I'm like, wow, okay, so it is possible, you know, and um, and um, and that led me, you know, to Jesse, and here we are today. Wow. That's awesome, Gary. I didn't actually know half of that story, <laughs> but super awesome. Uh, I, I'm i very happy that we met as well. Uh, at this point, you know, the way that we've been treating Nina, uh, it's a trip that she's come out of remission. You know, there's some dogs that I've helped and they go into remission. They stay in there just like Shorty, never come out of it. Some yeah. that go in and yeah. come out. Uh, so yeah. I'm just glad that we're still working with Nina to try and figure it out to get her to a place where we can get her on just cannabis oil and not worry about that chemo anymore. Uh, Absolutely. But on the back end, just, I, just uh, ahead, what I was going to just say real quick, uh, Gary and I guys, uh, along with Tino, we're working on a kind of a secret project right now uh, to try and get more information out to people. So hopefully mid this year, uh, we're going to get close to maybe, you know, putting this out there for people to use. It's, it's something that we're hoping is going to help people not only get more information and, and help them streamline the, inf the, the process of getting their doggies better, but it can help hopefully help people, not just with their dogs, but eventually with the, with their, uh, human loved ones, you know? So, um, yeah. So thank you, Gary. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I maybe I cut you, you off. Were you going to say something else? I'm no, sorry. no, 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 no. You said it all right there. Um, it's, it's about giving back, you know, and, and, and I, I just feel so comfortable, you know, because, you know, your nature, my nature, we're just the same, man, you know, and, and our engineering, we have our same, the same kind of analytical mind of thinking, um, because we're both engineers and, and, you know, we look for the facts and, and when I found those facts, the facts are just there, man. And then it's, and it's real. So if anyone is contemplating, you know, whether this works or it doesn't work, or the facts are there, um, 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 cannabis does kill cancer cells. It's given in the proper dosages, and um, you have to be, it has to be supervised. You know, you just don't go out there and try to do it yourself because you can really harm your dog and you get discouraged and you just walk away from it. And not knowing that all it, would t all it takes is just hanging in there, you have to have a lot of patience. Every exactly. dog's DNA is different, you know. So I mean, Shorty, he was able to come out of remission and stay out of remission. My dog wasn't okay. So, but doesn't doesn't mean that the, that the medicine is not working. It means that you know we, we if there's there's we just got to keep adjusting it a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right until we get it right. Because there is no science to this yet. There, you know, and we're, we're we're trying to generate the data. That's what we're um, working on. <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That, okay, now this works for this particular process, you know, I mean, for this situation and and that works for another situation. So 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 God bless both of you. Uh continue what you're doing. I support Thank you hundred percent. And um, you know, uh, we'll be talking soon and and you know, um, you know, all the best to you man and your heart and and hopefully one day I get a chance to meet you also. Where are you at? He's right down the street. Yeah, we're going to have lunch soon. Oh, you're in California? Yeah, yeah. He's here. In, he's, oh, yeah. He's oh, right, right on, bro. Yeah, yeah, we'll get together. Right on. Yeah. You don't, you don't, happen, to sure. ri you don't happen to ride motorcycles, do you? And I do. Well, I mean, I'm thinking about buying a Hardy right now. Let I me know because I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to find people to ride. Everybody's... <laughs> Everybody's, everybody's, yeah. oh, you don't want to ride in L.A. No, L.A.'s got the best riding. Anyway, <laughs> dude, let me know because I'm always looking for people to ride okay. with. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Gary. Okay, thank man. you so much for the call, okay, brother. Guys. We'll talk soon. Take care. Okay, God bless. All right, take care. Bye-bye. That's awesome. So, yeah, his dog is actually doing really well. Uh, he had a scare because the lymph nodes started swelling up, and I, you know, appetite was still good. Mm -hmm. She was still behaving normal, mm -hmm. but... When you see something like that, that's when you yeah. got you got to start taking action. My dog's lymph nodes. So I, I I wanted to ask him. I'm pretty sure it's probably the same. Every lymph node in their body just blows up. Yeah. The ones that I first found under her neck were huge. They weren't impending on her breathing. I don't remember. God, it was five years ago. Um, but she had them. So she had them here under her throat. Uh, in her groin area, they 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 felt like 
like hockey pucks turned sideways, if you're watching the video, in her groin, and then on the back of her legs stuck out. So the ones on the back of her legs took the longest to go away. But we never did chemo. We did the prednisone, and we weaned her off of it. If you see my videos, I've said this a billion times, uh, a couple months into the cannabis oil. And then her lymph nodes started, some of them, I can't remember which ones, the ones in the back of the legs took forever to go down. These went down pretty quick, and then I remember they started, might have been these that were going up again, and then we went on the prednisone again, maybe a year into it. But that's the the extent that we went with you know the drugs was just prednisone. And again, I've stressed this every time. I don't, according to what we did, according to Dr. Damien Dressler from the Dog Cancer Survival Guide, don't feed raw. I see people all day long talking about feed raw, feed raw. Sure, I mean, I guess there's cases where people have been okay and they've had success, but according, to, and I'm just saying what we did. Dressler talks about their dogs have killer stomachs. They can bury something and go back and get it and eat, and they're not gonna they're not gonna die of food poisoning. They're gonna be fine. But what he's saying is, when you're feeding raw, they're they have that stomach. They have the ca the capability to handle if there's something bad in the food that might make them sick. So what he says is why would you uh, stress an already taxed immune system if they're if we want all their energy going to fighting this cancer? So let's make it as easy on them as possible in so many words. And that's why I always say on the forums, if you're following, don't feed raw. That's what we did. I see people talking about feeding raw. She was fed raw before. We went to the Damien Dressler, which was some cooked food and some supplements and stuff. Just look at the Damien Dressler Dog Cancer Survival Guide. Excuse me. <clears throat> and now we're back on to raw. But I, my, our, our protocol, we did the oils from cannabis, not hemp, and we did the Dog Cancer Survival Guide and lots of comedies. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I... Whenever I speak to somebody for the first time and they're, you know, nervous about starting their dog, I've heard them tell me time and time again, uh, is this safe for my dog? Can my dog handle right, it? Right. You know, I've heard from other people or their vets have said uh, THC is bad or toxic for the dog. Well, let me give you guys a little bit of clarity when it comes to THC. I'm and seeing your less dog. and less of that, by the way. Yeah. Well, the truth is yeah. there's no such thing. Right. Here's here's the reality of it. If you gave your dog too much water. Your dog would vomit and have diarrhea. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean water's bad. It's mm -hmm. just you gave too much. Mm -hmm. When it comes to THC, a little is okay. The right amount is great. A little too much is not good. So that's what happens with THC. Mm -hmm. If you and especially if you're thinking, I would rather give them more. More is better when it comes to THC. This is a lot of people's ideas, right? Because yeah, I want to yeah. get my dog better yeah. tomorrow, and so I want to give them a ton of THC. And, and let's go get that Rick Simpson stuff that mm. people are talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the problem. Lymphoma, leukemia, brain tumors of all types. If you give too much, the brain tumors start to have reactions and they'll start seizing. The, the dog or the person will start seizing. Lymphoma, they'll go through a Herxheimer's reaction. Leukemia, same thing. The only cancers we can do that with and be safe are the sarcomas or the carcinomas because typically those are a mass and they're not in the blood. Uh, but, you know, there's other type of uh, carcinomas that can be. And and so the, the body, when you start with the big heavy masses, like even mast cell tumors, yeah, if you have THC, go for it. Give it to your dog in a very calculated way. Build up the dosage, mm. start mm -hmm. off with a very small amount. But now if you only have RSO or FECO or whatever you have from your dispensary and it's super thick, super concentrated, don't even try it. Yeah. Because I'll tell you what, Try it on yourself first uh -huh. and see what happens. I remember when I first gave Shorty the FECO, the full extract cannabis oil, you guys. It's the black tar liquid. It's the tinctures. It's like a little dropper. It's really liquid. Um, uh, the FECO is like a mud, kind of like an oil. Like I call it more like tar. Yes, like a tar. When I first gave her the THC, I mean, it was like the size of the period on a typewriter, you know, and she, it was, she, you know, her temple was pure. She wasn't used to it. <laughs> so she was like, those of you watching the video, I'm jerking my head left and right. Like, what's that? What's yeah. that? What's that? And it was so little. And now, oh, by the way, I wanted to ask you about f people who are uh, maintenance five years in, I, I, I stopped on the FICO I'm doing a lot of the tinctures, the blue at night. Um, 
and the she was so uh now it's like i give her <laughs> i give her like a booger size and nothing just yeah, yeah. she'll sleep she's fine but the um the uh tinctures the maintenance what would you have to say cuz i'm 5 years in and i i really tapered down what i was giving her um, I would give it maybe once a day, but then she was having, she's 16, so she was having pain from a back injury she had years ago. She was a crazy Frisbee dog, and uh, she had a huge back surgery. So she's, like, you know when your dog's in pain and they'll get the, the panting? <sighs> yeah. So what I, I went back to three times a day with the tinctures, just the tinctures, and the 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 panting went away. The panting went away. So what would you recommend for uh, people that are, do that are doing maintenance for I, I but I guess it just depends on the dog, right? Well, no, I do have a formula that I go off of that helps me determine how much to give a dog that's in remission. So, lymphoma should be CBD what the dog weighs in milligrams. So, mm. let's say Shorty weighs 60 pounds. Then we would split that up into two dosages, one in the morning, one in the evening. Oh, okay. 30 milligrams, 30 milligrams. Now you have your CBD. Okay. You want half of that in THC. Oh. So then we do another maybe 10 milligrams in the morning, 10, 15 milligrams in the morning of THC with the CBD. And then another 10 to 15 at night with the CBD as well. And that's it. That's your maintenance dosage for life. Uh -huh. uh, that's what I've seen works when you give the dog their weight in CBD and half of their weight in THC. Uh. Now, let's say it's a, a more aggressive cancer like an osteosarcoma. Once we get the dog into remission, the dosage for remission is, is a lot higher. Uh -huh. We would go uh, almost... Uh, three times in CBD, their body weight, and exactly what they weigh mm -hmm. in THC. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more medicine. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Every dog is a little different. How much we give at the end is is dependent mm -hmm. on their diagnosis and how well they're doing with the treatment. Mm -hmm. Some dogs, as they get going into treatment, they the parent even would say, you know, let's keep them on this dose because it's working. We don't want to go down any further. So they stay on a full-blown regimen of three times a day mm -hmm. with all the medicines and and that for them is better whereas some people because of costs and you know the medicine yeah. is hard to get and right. all that they're thinking well let's right. try and save some money mm -hmm. and and they bring it dial it down my problem with that is we don't want to go any further down than what we should because then at that point the dog comes out of remission uh but yeah most people as they get going with the treatment they'll find out that the, the dosage, as we get to that proper dosage, because they're worried about giving their dog too much THC or whatever, they find out very quickly that the THC not only doesn't hurt their dog, but it'll actually help their dog feel better. Mm -hmm. and, and we do that very gradually by introducing it at a very small amount and then building it over time. Uh, but yeah, just so people are very clear of this, there is no such thing as THC toxicity that causes a dog to pass away. Right. The, the science says that if a person, any vertebrae or dog cat, were to ingest 1,000 milligrams per pound of body weight, so let's say Shorty ingested uh, 60,000 milligrams <laughs> of THC, which is basically a bucket full. Yeah. First of all, where are you going to keep that? How is she getting into yeah, it? Getting and into if she it. did get into it and, and she started tasting, she'd find out real quick. It's spicy and yeah, it's yeah. and it's terrible. Yeah. So she would stop. But if, let's say she ate the whole thing. Then maybe, maybe she could have a reaction that yeah. looks something I, bad. I'm glad you brought that up because I'm, gonna, I'm stealing a line from Joe Rogan. The only way weed has killed anybody is if there's a plane smuggling it into America and they drop a shipment on your head. <laughs> That's the only way weed is killing anybody. It's yeah. not. And then, oh, my man, um, what was his, Gary? Yeah. He said... Um, that if you give too much, it could, I don't think, I mean, your dog will get sick, maybe, uh, maybe they'll have a really, really wicked case of the munchies, but it's, your dog's not going to die. But here's the thing, don't give too much and freak your dog out. The CBD approach, what you were saying, is just uh, getting into their system. It's a better way of approaching it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so some at some point, let's say you do give your dog too much THC. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to have CBD on hand. Oh, because it balances it out? It's the antidote. Yeah, nice. So let's say you give your dog a whole bunch of THC by accident. I've had people by mistake see whatever bottle. They think it's the, the CBD oh, right. and they give THC. And they call me or they text me, oh, my God, I gave my yeah, dog yeah. so much of yeah. this. 
okay, give them a little bit of CBD, and that's the antidote. It goes away mm-hmm. completely, mitigates the psychoactivity, that takes away all the euphoria. At that point, you're going to need to uh, relax, put on some Almond Brothers, maybe some uh, Pink Floyd, and just ride it out. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the cool part to me. I've never, ever worried about a person like, you know, the person themselves giving their dog the medicine. They freak yeah, out yeah, all the yeah. time. I'm going to give them three drops. Are you sure that's not too much? Yeah. We're just getting started. But at some point, because of how they see the dog behaving after they give them in the way that we give it to them, and they start behaving all cool, doing cartwheels, acting uh-huh. like puppies, uh-huh. then they're like, okay, good. Now I know this is not going to hurt my dog, uh-huh. and I guess whatever I've been told all this time is wasn't right. There was two things I wanted to touch on, giving it and then your story about uh, getting really drunk and then doing an experiment on yourself. Don't let me forget about that. Um, but giving your dog the, the oils, giving your dog the tinctures, I made a couple videos. I'll repost it. This comes down to um, the connection you have with your dog, training, your dog trusting you. For me, you guys from the very beginning were put it in some food, do this. For me, it was like, no, I'm putting it right into her mouth. And I got videos of like, I'm holding their, I open their lip, I drop it in there. If I'm doing the oil, I'll put it on my finger and I'll just stick it in the back of their tongue. And I tasted that, man. That stuff tastes nasty. <laughs> it's nasty. And they're fine, so I'll give them a treat. But they're, <laughs> they're good with it. It's like as soon as I give Shorty the the drops, she starts licking her paws. And um, so I make sure to put it in her lip or in the back. But um, when you're administering it, just for me, you know, you can put it in the food, but for me, it's just like it's like when you put it under your tongue. You want it in your system yeah, yeah. faster than anything. And then what I wanted to say was eczema. Since I've moved to L.A. every winter, I'm getting these really dry patches, and I've been putting the CBD on my skin, and that stuff works. Unbelievable. I mean, I'm starting to sound like a bad infomercial, but talk about— uh, I mean, maybe we talked about this on the last podcast where you wanted to see how it would work on hangovers. I don't even did we do that on the well, last podcast? Well, there's uh, the science behind the hangover is that your liver is toxic mm. after you've been drinking. The alcohol mm. toxifies your liver, and that's what makes you feel crummy, hungover. You don't want to get out of bed. Your stomach hurts. Uh-huh. All these problems, right? So when you start, let's say for example, you drank all night. The next morning, before you get up and have your day going. You take a little bit of CBD or even do it before you go to bed. Uh, the CBD will actually take away not only the inflammation that's caused by the alcohol, right. but it takes away the toxins that causes the hangover in the first place. And if you still have alcohol in your system, it actually neutralizes alcohol and the euphoric feeling, the the drunken feeling that you get from it. So I've done, like you said, I did this experiment on myself. I drank I don't know, maybe over a six pack of, I mean, just, I can drink, man. I'm an ex-Marine brother. I can drink any, and I don't drink anymore. I haven't drank Uh in years. Uh Uh, But whenever I drink, the Mexican in me comes out, brother. And I'm like, (laughs) boom, boom. So I drank a bunch of beers and I told my wife, I go, hey, this is a good time to see if the CBD hypothesis that I have is right. So you woke up with a hangover. I didn't even go to sleep. I, that night, I, before I left the party, Uh I took the CBD. By the time I got home, I was sober. Whoa. By the time I was ready to go to bed, I was like, wow, man, I really don't feel drunk at all or even buzzed. And I woke up the next morning, went to the gym, didn't have a hangover completely. Nice. So so my theory is now, CBD, if you have the right stuff, not from hemp, but the real deal from cannabis, mm. can actually mitigate not only a hangover, but the feeling of having of being drunk. So- yeah, that's another development that we're going to work on down the road. Well, on- that's the thing about the gym is like I know like I have this regiment where I get Saturday and Sundays off like all uh, when I will go to the gym and I know, uh, OK, I'm not going to like I don't drink, but sometimes I'll have like a glass of wine or something. And I'm like, OK, I know not to drink because the next day you're going to fill it in the gym. You were able to go to the gym and you were cool. No that's, problem. That's so th- besides that, I take a ton of CBD just for maintenance. I've had uh, mm. doctors tell me that I would end up in a wheelchair if I didn't have surgery on my back. I have five bulging discs. The biggest uh, disc that's out of it is like 10 millimeters. Wow. And so I've been taking it for that part of it. Plus, when I was in the Marine Corps, I jacked up my knees and my uh, shoulders. Uh-huh. My... So for me, I work out Monday through Friday. Uh-huh. I take it Monday through Friday. I never get sore. Nice. I get the best sleep nice. at night. Uh, I don't really ever gain too much weight because my body's always regulated. My 
my body's always. So what do you? How much you CBD are you taking a day? Who? I'm gonna post it one day. As a matter of fact, I might do a live. So feed. are you in the tinctures? No, I do feco. I do. Oh, you do the feco. Okay. Six rice grain sized pieces of CBD feco. Every day. In the morning. Oh, in the morning, six. Six, and then another six at night. Okay. So six rice grains. Each rice grain's thirty milligrams. It's 180 milligrams of CBD from cannabis in the morning, and then again in the evening. In the morning, I take THC, indica, and a little bit of sativa. It's like a hybrid, mostly indica. Uh huh. And then at night, before I go to bed, I take a ton of indica, uh, probably another two to three hundred milligrams uh-huh. of just CB, uh, THC feco at night. Okay. A ton of it. That's way out of anybody's league. I mean, I'll, I'll put Snoop Dogg to bed. <laughs> For real, brother. Nobody can hang with me and my wife when it comes to this stuff. Uh, <laughs> because the concentrates, uh, let, me, let me go into something real quick. When people are, are talking about giving their dog the medicine, I've heard them say, can I give them an edible? Can I give them some cookies right. or something I got at the mm-hmm. dispensary or whatever? Here's the problem. Not knowing how your dog's going to react to an edible right off the bat is is scary by yeah. itself, yeah. let alone most of the edibles are THC, and they usually metastas or uh, metabolize through the liver right. in, a, in a double way, so it actually causes it to feel twice or way three more. times as stronger. Way more. So you don't necessarily, yeah, tinctures are edible, but they, they behave different in the body than edibles that come from a fat that they usually make the butter from, and that's how they create those edibles from. So I would say... If you can, try and get a tincture Interesting. to start with. That's basically a coconut extracted mm-hmm. cannabis oil in a little bottle. You'll need a CBD and some type of THC. If you can get a hybrid, then you got the two. Now That's a good point. Edibles compared to tinctures. And yeah, edible. man. There's people that have done it. You know, they're, yeah. oh, you know, it was funny. I gave yeah. it to my dog, and then they started tripping. Yeah. Well, your dog didn't think it was funny. Right. So just going back to look, you know, if you can't get... If you can't get the tinctures and the feco, talk to someone like Jesse. If you can't get, if you if talk to Jesse, talk to someone who's dealt with what we're talking about with yeah. specifically ill dogs, cancer, autoimmune, whatever. And before you start, before you go to dispensary and start giving them gummy bears, I mean, and then uh, um, then put sugar on top of that. Yeah, we no, don't want to give sugar to cancer. We don't. You have the people at the dispensaries too that. They're kids working behind the counter that, right. you know, they, they just, they're there for a job. They know how to get they don't, you high. Yeah, they're not trying to help you with your medicinal needs. So when you're thinking about buying it, you're right. Try and get some idea of what you're going to need. You, have, you need two compounds, THC and CBD, from cannabis. If you can get those two in a tincture, then you could start dosing. Uh, but eventually you want to refine it. You want to get more specific on the quality, a little bit better on uh, figuring out what the actual amount that you're giving because that's what we're hoping to do is is give your dog an amount of medicine that we can track because at some point if there's a reaction, how much did you give? Okay, right. I know exactly how. Okay, so now we can scale it back. Uh-huh. If we don't know, if we're just winging it, if we're just, right. well, eyeballing here and there, then, you know, it's not as cool. So I think that's it, guys. Cool. A lot of info there. Um, yeah, so guys, get get if you're not, I mean, you're seeing this on our group because we're going to post this yeah, on Yeah, and uh, go to our uh, website, healing-project.info. Once again, healing-project. Don't send me an email. Just sign up through the, there's a tab up at the top that allows you to uh, uh, set an appointment and a, a consultation. Uh, but don't email me because I never check my emails. I'm too busy for that. Right, stuff. too much. And we're going to post this on the Healing Project or the OC page and the My Dog Beat Cancer. You're seeing this, and we're going to put this on YouTube as well. Um, we'll we'll send you this these links, and we will keep you informed on when we're going to do this again. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you, Nolan. Thank you very much, Lona. Nolan. Peace, love, and pit bulls, guys. Thank you. <laughs>